Hate ads? Subscribe to Acast Plus now to skip ads and more. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. Save all the stuff you really need and stuff you bought for fun. Stuff you've always really wanted this holiday at Amazon. Stuff that is discounted if you're naughty or you're nice. Stuff to buy your grandma who drinks her Chardonnay with ice. Stuff to make you big and strong. Stuff we can name in this song. Stuff for lawns and decking halls. Say big on the stuff at Amazon. Stop. Find your perfect fall suit with Indochino. Customize every detail of their seasonal designs for a one-of-a-kind look at a great price. And get $50 off purchases of $399 or more at Indochino.com. Promo code FALLUPDATE. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what today is? I think I do. What is today? Saturday Q&A. That's right. And we are going to talk about the Bookses of Chronicles. The Bookses of Chronicles? The Bookses. Okay. All, all, right. all them all, books. All them books, like, a, like an intro to the Chronicles? Kind of, yeah. Because, you know, so far we've just been reading fucking names. Right, exactly. And that is some boring shit. It is some boring shit, but... Yeah, I thought I would talk a little bit about the history of the name Chronicles yeah. and the book itself, and then about the author, Okay, and then about the story Okay, that cool. we haven't got to yet. Uh, we have a little bit of a sad news to, to present right now. Yeah, and, um, a, and a it bit happened of an apology. As we're recording, like it, we, we found out about this earlier today, and we had already released the podcast that we recorded the night before. But so it's a little bit of an apology, a little bit of news, but like Hagrid died, like from Robbie Coltrane. Yeah, Robbie Coltrane, the actor who portrayed Hagrid in the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, and like yesterday we did our episode and we were kind of well, we you know, were talking saying about things about Hagrid, the tribe of Hagrid, the Hagrite, Hagridites, right? right. And then, yeah, yeah. So that that felt that felt too, bad. Yeah, and I don't know. We didn't. We weren't. Happy we didn't like with that. that. Yeah, yeah. And so, so we're sorry that we talked about Hagrid on on our episode that the, the day he died. It, yeah, it landed the day that we got the news that, that was, Robbie Coltrane died. And, I mean, in a way, it, we could look at it as, like, oh, he's in our hearts forever. Right, right. But it just didn't feel... It, it felt like we were making fun, and we absolutely yeah, no, were definitely not. definitely not making fun at all. Like, that was we, not intended. So yeah. we just wanted to make sure we said that, because yeah. as our family goes, you know, Harry Potter... It, it it holds a place in our life. Um, and J.K. That, Rowling's bad stuff notwithstanding. Right, yes. As um, my queer child says, the one who's about to be 18 so has is old enough to have their own opinion about things. Right. Um, the world belongs to us now, not to her. That's right. And I love that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, we just wanted to mention that, and then uh, now we're ready to go ahead and get into this Q&A. Yep. All right, let's go do it. Let's. Hey, wife. Yes, husband. Did you know that we are now on Patreon? Um, yes, because you told me, but also, no, tell me more. <laughs> so we're on Patreon now. Are we? We are, and our supporters can go there and support us, and we have multiple levels all the way up to You Killed God. That sounds really drastic and escalated quickly-ish. Well, no, there's multiple levels before there. So it, es- it es- escalates on a sliding scale of, you know, cheap to, to not cheap. Oh. But, you know, we can definitely use any amount. So, like, any support is always appreciated. So what exactly is Patreon? It's a place where you can show your support for our podcast. And Just our podcast? Any podcast or any <laughs> performer. 
But, you know, we're the ones that, you know, you're listening to right now. So maybe you should, uh, you know, support us. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. But we love you anyway. So all you got to do is go to Patreon. Look up Sacrilegious Discourse. It's actually patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse is our actual main page there. So head on over and send us some love. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start out talking about the history of... Of these their chronicles. The history of these their chronicles. Got okay. it. Okay. Um, it comes from the word, the title of the book comes from the word, um, the Greek. It's, okay, I'm going to try real hard not to fuck this up, but <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. We all know it. how this goes. <laughs> well, it's, it's a Greek word, so right. at least the letter combinations make sense to Here, me. Here, I thought it was going to come from Narnia. Fuck off. Chronicles of. Yeah. Chronicles of. <laughs> but um, it's got a lot of syllables in it. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's a paralipom, paralipomenon. Paralipomenon. Okay. Okay, does that sound yeah. right? Pomeranian, yeah. Yes. Got it. So it comes from paralipomenon one and two, which okay. means things left out. And how good of a title hmm. of a book would that be? I mean, I like Things that. Things left out, But right? so far, I'm not liking the practicality of it in this book. Okay, well, I'm not there yet. Okay. But yeah, I hear you. Right. I hear you. Um, it was originally part of a larger work that included the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, which is the two books that follow this. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And this is the, these together are the final books of the Hebrew Bible. Oh, really? Which I didn't know. And it's a survey of Israel's history from Adam to the activity of Ezra and Nehemiah in the period after the Babylonian exile. So we're talking like 6th century BC. But we're not, like, it's not the end of the Old Testament, is it? Or is no, it? No, no. Okay. No. So there's a difference between the Hebrew Bible and what comes after these two other books, Apparently. Apparently. Either that or they're in a different order in the Hebrew Bible. I'm, I'm interested in that information at right. some point. I will probably get more into that in our next weekend Q&A. Okay. Because we'll still be doing chronology <laughs> right, and names. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, about the author now. Um, the language it's not style- God? Call me. Call me shocked. No, none of these are God, and none of them I'm claim joking. to be God. I'm joking. Oh. People always claim. Well, Christians they, always they claim. They claim that it's God's word, but through a person. Like, they say, you know, Moses wrote the Old Testament, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And so the author that they claim this time, um, the language, style, and ideas mark the work as the product of a single author whom we call the Chronicler. The Chronicler. That's a great name for somebody. Right? The chronicler. So, um... We remember I told you before I was looking for like the next section, right? That yeah. I I like being able to finish these off in sections. Sure. So we just finished the Deuteronomistic history, right? Mm-hmm. Now we're in the age of the chronicler. That's that's really great. Right? Yeah. And so it's first and second chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah. Okay. Okay. Yep. And he probably lived about 350 to 300 BC. Okay. Around that time. All right. Okay. And they say the writer was probably male. Duh. Duh. Probably a Levite, a temple priest. Yeah. And probably from Jerusalem. Okay. He was well-read, a skilled editor, and a sophisticated theologian. Okay. And they say this because um, clearly he had read all of this other information. Right. And was able to not just read it and understand it, but then copy it and into a um, brief Summary. So you're right. And then fill in the blanks that mm-hmm. some that the Bible didn't Exactly. Cover. So, I mean, he was very well educated. Which it clearly. does. I mean, like, there has been, um, I mean, let's, name, name listing aside, there have been some asides that he's gone into so far mm-hmm. that have been, you know, things that we didn't know about. Sure. So, I mean, there there are some interesting things, and I think it's going to get more that way. It is. After next week. It so, is. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jewish and Christian tradition identify this author as the 5th century B.C. figure Ezra. Oh. So, you know, 1st okay. and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra and Nehemiah. Right. Um, it's generally believed that it was Ezra who wrote those, what we call four books. Okay. Although, um, Ezra and Nehemiah used to be one book. Okay. 
Okay. Got it. Yep. So he gives his name to the book of Ezra, obviously. And Ezra is also believed to have written both Chronicles and the Ezra and Nehemiah collection. Okay. So, which I just said. Yeah. Okay. So about but, the story. But, you know, the Bible likes to repeat too, so it's all good. It is. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'm just a poet, bitches. Okay. So about the story. The chronicler used the Old Testament books of Samuel and Kings as sources for his historical account. Okay. But he freely modified the information um, to match his own interests and point of view. So he he would add things in. Yeah. That. That fit his point of study as what, to what he was studying about to and learning what about. What he was and, trying to do, and the whole point of all of these names. Is it's what I suspected at the time, and remember I said this out loud. He's trying to show a very clear and defined um, trail of of lineage. all the way lineage, all the way down through David right. and beyond. Sure. So those names were his part of his plan. Okay. So it was done very intentionally. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but things that he added, nothing is added that would lessen David's glory. Okay. But much is added to enhance it. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So anything he added was only to make David look that much better. Right. And there are several examples that were supplied that I'm not going to get into here because we will see those in our contradictions at the end of Chronicles. Okay. Okay. All right. so, I just it's it's interesting to me that there is a time in our history when, you know, and and, and we're talking about, you know, approximately two and a Two and a half cent. I'm sorry. Two thousand five hundred years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, mm-hmm. and um, that that was a time when the Bible was still a fluid book being written. Yeah, like it's not even. There's not a Bible, so to speak, at this time. Right. And we're talking about two thousand five hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's not. It is a significant amount of time. But in the grand scheme of history and, and the nothing. world and the universe, it's just nothing. Right. And and here we are talking about a person that we are aware of, possibly, right. who wrote some of the Bible. And to me, that's really just kind of cool. Yeah. Like, in a, in a way. like In, in a in historical a, kind of way. Right, in right, a, right. In a history context. Yeah. Purely black and white. Right. I don't yeah. think that people actually think about this as somebody sat there and wrote this stuff. Right. You know, they because they do pitch it as the word of god you know? right and they just think well somebody like you know was in a trance and just fucking wrote the word of god but so. no somebody was sitting at a desk pouring over yeah. various scrolls and documents that's, what I was, that's kind of what it made me think this yeah. because this guy's literally studying this stuff and then mm-hmm. adding his two cents essentially yeah so i i really appreciated that as well right it did put it a little more in context and give me a little more of a rounded perspective of a human being Instead right. of just these things happened in history. Right. Because, I mean, tell, tell me I'm wrong. Like, I, th- I feel like the sense is that somebody was just, like, in a trance writing for God. Oh, yeah. Like, that's Absolutely. what people make it seem like. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and even to this point, like, um, you're not supposed to let the Bible touch the floor, much like a flag. <laughs> and, you know, you're not supposed to deface your Bible and all that because, you know, it's God's yeah. word. And it's like... Actually, it's mass produced by a fucking machine. Yeah. You know? Right. Like, this this isn't... But, I mean, even I feel bad. Like, I don't really want to deface a Bible too much. Like, I don't know. I might... I don't really give a shit. I might take... Well, I have a feeling about books in general. Okay. Right. That I don't like to write in books. Fair enough. And also, like, I would just feel weird. I don't know. I, I don't fully understand or know all of my feelings about what it would mean to deface a Bible. Got it. Got it. So. I I don't have any need specifically to deface a Bible, but I also don't care one way or the other. Yeah. Um, It's just paper and a binding to Well, yeah, that's what I said. It's just mass produced. Right. In a factory. Right. So the chronicler excludes almost all material from the books of Kings Concerning the northern kingdom of Israel. Hmm. Because, again... it's not relevant to his yeah. thought process here. Again, yeah. He's yeah. just worried about making sure we understand... David's um, lineage. Yeah, David's lineage. So, um, the writer's concern about true Israel is not surprising for the reconstitution of Israel's life after the Babylonian exile... 
required a redefinition of Israel's identity. Gotcha. So we're not there yet. But what this guy is basically trying to do is not just show the um, line of succession through David, but also to create a more cohesive line of um, what Israel actually is. Yeah, like right. what it means, who they are. Sure, you know. Yeah. So. So then, the, this is the process of them defining what Israel stands for. What you know, what they what they actually are meant to be. Exactly. I guess. Exactly. And okay. I thought that was the most interesting fact about this because um, we just have this, this idea that the Israelites always knew and felt who they were and they just didn't. I don't, I don't know that we got like, I think that they questioned it quite a bit. No, but honestly. I mean, before reading the Bible. Okay. That's yeah, what I mean. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, like, the, you always hear God's chosen people, right? Yeah. Like that's all. And, that's all you ever hear. And they just were, and they knew it. The end. Right, and to some extent, I can see where that thinking comes from. But to the other, to to speak to the other side of that is that I don't know. God really wavered on these people a lot. Mm-hmm. And they wavered on him, too. Definitely, definitely. And that, you know, it, it it it's definitely not been solidified right. in my mind that these are God's people. Right. Right? Like, there's a few people that stand out, like Moses and David and, David and, and, and things Elisha. like that. Sure. That definitely pass as, quote, unquote, God's people, I guess. Right. right? But overall, as a group of people, they definitely don't seem to fit the bill. Right. No, I totally agree. Thus far. Not just the people fitting the bill as um, serving God, but fitting the bill as how God treats them. Like, right. Like, from both ends. It yeah. just doesn't satisfy that, that. No, it's a very tentative relationship, honestly. Right. Like, they right. are not good with each other. They're not <laughs> good with each other. Yeah. I think that is probably the best way to sum that up. Yeah. So that is what I had for today. Just, oh, okay. Just a little bit of a um, introduction to what Chronicles is about, who wrote it, and why. Got it. Got it. Well, that's that's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And I find it very interesting that it was one person and that it might be the end of the Hebrew Bible, which I want to know more about. Sure. And so. like I said, I will try to dig into that some more. And um, I'm not sure what else I will get into. I will find another rabbit hole. But I didn't want to get too far into contradictions, you sure. know. So, and that's that's another thing is when I'm doing a general um, discourse, if you will. Yeah. Um, I run the risk of spoilers or um, right. You know, getting into material that we're not ready to cover. Sure. So. No, I get it. I get it. It's yeah, got to be real careful. Right. I understand. All right. Well, I guess that was our Q&A for today. Q&A Saturday. And tomorrow we will be back with... Sacrilegious Book Club. And we'll have our weekly uh, wrap-up uh, replay, replay mm-hmm. tomorrow as well. And then on Monday we'll be back with... First Chronicles Chapter 6. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.